Happy holidays everybody and welcome back to the channel and the little companion series for the DT-01, 02, 03 build that I'm currently building on my main RC channel over here. Today we are gonna add another gearbox to the collection because I am actually gonna build my first or rebuild my first DT-02 and my first DT buggy ever. It's a beautiful Tamiya Desert Gator XB. If you know what XB stands for, it's expert belt, which is Tamiya's term for an RTR buggy without batteries and charger and everything, but a factory built model. Here we got it in all its glory. As you probably can see, it requires a little bit of rebuilding and a little bit of time and work. At least we got the Desert Gator body relatively intact, no serious cracks or anything. If you know the Expert Build series, these XB bodies are really perfect and really expert built, cut by the factory and all the stickers applied absolutely perfectly. It's another story with the hard bodies, but the polycarbonate bodies of the XB models are really excellent. The wing is also doing very well compared to the amount of use I have used it and the years that have passed by. So I'm really happy with it and I think it really deserves a revitalization today. At least the gearbox for now. So it's been lying in its box for approximately two years by now. I do not have the original box to show you but because this was a second hand model that I bought here in Denmark for a relatively decent price some time ago maybe in 2014 or 15. It was one of my first buggies, Tamiya buggies and it was one of my first Tamiya models. I was, remember I was very disappointed when I got it because I had some other buggies that were faster and doing much better but once I got some things sorted out, new tires, rear tires and new motor, pinion gear, ball bearings and dampers, I was very excited and my DT story began for real. I think I do have all the original screws and some extra parts. I even got some more new parts that I purchased over the years. But I am definitely missing some of the parts. I'll take you through my personal DT-02 story and DT-03 story in just a moment. And you can just skip that and go straight to the build where I also will show you some tips that I am using for my DT-02 and 03 builds. Not necessarily the right tips, but it's just the way that I built mine and maybe you can use a few of the tips along the way. Now again an important fact, if you buy a Desert Gator kit, it will pretty much look like this sand wiper gearbox with all the upgraded metal parts. This only has the motor and the pinion gear compared to a completely stock model. And also it comes with ball bearings, full ball bearings and everything. So the sand wiper kit and the desert gator kit are very similar, if almost identical except for the body. You do get, do not get the 
torque tuned as you get with the DT03 models nowadays. You get a standard Tamiya's 27 turn silver can. So with these older kits you might want to switch it out for a sport tuned or torque tuned or go brushless or everything that you decide. So what we will be building here today comes nowhere near the sand wiper or my upgraded racing fighter here, but it's gonna be more or less like this DT-03 new fighter buggy. Apart from the stalk tuned, <laughs> not stalk, but torque tuned motor, this one is the pretty much standard DT-02 and DT-03 setup. As you can see, the, both the new fighter buggy and the racing fighter buggy, the two buggies in the DT-03 series, pretty much comes apart from the dampers and the torque tuned motor as a original super fighter G would have come when the DT-02 was brand new. So we've got the plastic dog bones and the plastic and metal combined plastic and metal uh, diff cups and wheel axles and this is pretty much how most DT-02s and DT-03 comes and the DT-02 Desert Gator XB model the expert build not the kit pretty much will look like this one too now my personal story behind the Desert Gator and why it is in a thousand pieces or at least a hundred pieces has something to do with this DT-02 MS. This is the same wiper wiper body that I got. This is the original MS body, but I prefer the same wiper body. So at about a time when I was ready to start upgrading my Desert Gator even more, I ran into this. And this is also a second-hand model. And instead of starting upgrading my Desert Gator, I started tearing this one down and rebuilding it a couple of times. Now it got a lot of three racing parts and shock towers, uh, additional to the DT-02 MS standard upgrades like the turnbuckles and the uh, dampers, uh, ball differential and all that. So there was really no reason start starting to work and upgrading the Desert Gator when I had this one. So at the time when my DT-02 MS was finished, I ran into another second hand DT-02 MS. It didn't come with the original body or anything, a very ugly body, but all the O2 parts O2 MS parts like the turnbuckles and the universal drive shafts and all that ball differential was included. So this is basically what I'm using for my DT-03 racing fighter at the moment. The idea was to use the racing fighter leftover parts like the plastic drive shafts and everything for my Desert Gator but as time went by the project got bigger and I wanted to include a DT-01 in, in that build experience. Now that I am building, finally building my racing fighter I have some parts that I can use for my Desert Gator and get it up running again. Now I carefully handpicked the parts of the Desert Gator that I can use for the rear suspension and rear gearbox here, motor mount setup. So I'm definitely missing some other arms and some drive shafts and wheel axles and some diff cups. Funny thing, I actually had to tear down this racing fighter DT-02. Uh, DT-03, even I get confused with all the O3s, O2s, O1s, 
but I had to tear it down again to get these standard. These are for the gears, the shafts that the gears are spinning around here, the spur and the counter gear. And the DT02 actually had these in the lightweight edition with the hollow. I think I have a, a video showing it now, the difference. So as I'm building a pretty stock DT02 Desert Gator XB model right now, I took the stock DT03, which the Desert Gator also came with originally, and put the upgraded ones in the Racing Fighter. Now I have a lot of spares that I do not need, some more knuckle arms that I do not need. I got a lot of differentials here that I do not need for this build and the differential from the racing fighter that I do not need. The brand new knuckle arms from the racing fighter that I do not need right now. And here we got some parts that I need the what's it called the other arms of the standard Super Fighter G Desert Gator XP or whatever racing fighter new fighter buggy upper arms widget or upper A arms and we got the complete wheel setup with the drive shafts, dog bones and wheel axles and diff cups that I'm gonna use. So these are identical to the one that the XB Desert Gator came with. I also got the torque tuned motor because I'm gonna try to set up this Desert Gator pretty stuck, but stuck compared to uh, the new fighter buggy that I have with ball bearings and the torque tuned motor. So almost an original Desert Gator XP, but just almost. I'm gonna take you through some of my steps right now. I'm not gonna film everything right now because if you wanna see a DT02, DT03 gearbox being assembled, you can watch two videos with this one. I'm gonna take some pictures along the way, but in general, we just have this gearbox which are the exact same for the DT02 and 03. We got the lower arms here that are also identical for the DT03 and 02. Knuckle arms and so on. And the standard gear differential here. So I already took the liberty of cleaning up the old gears I just used some WD-40, some scrubbing and some soap and water and it works. It's not perfect, especially a spur gear that once was used with an aluminium pinion gear, but I inspected all gears very carefully and they are all doing fine. So I think I will go with the old Desert Gator set up here and parts apart from the racing fighter pins here, shafts for the gears. Now, except for the sand wiper and DT02 sand wiper, the DT02 Desert Gator and the DT02 MS Edition, I think all DT buggies come with these. I think all the XB models, the RTR buggies and the kit versions except for the three mentioned come with these plastic bushings. So an essential upgrade of course in all Tamiya kits except for a few ones is to get some ball bearings. Now for all the grasshoppers and hornets and the DT01 you need 9 11.50 ball bearings. For the DT02 and 03 you need 14 in total. 
for the Hubbers, the Hornets and the DT01, you also need one 850. But in general, if you're working on these buggies, a good tip is just to buy a lot of generic 1150 ball bearings because you're gonna need them. They can come in small tubes like this or in packages with 25 or 50 or 10 and they can be had at a relatively cheap price. Much cheaper than if you bought the selected ones like uh, DT02 Desert uh, <laughs> What's it called? Kumanun Bobby buggy upgrade ball bearings. But just get a lot of these if you're building a lot of these models. Because, well, one DT02 and one DT03 takes 14 per buggy. These one take nine, so you're gonna end up using them along the way. Of course, these are some generic ball bearings and you can always buy some Tamiya or Traxxas or whatever that are probably of better quality but for the hobbyists like me it's perfectly okay ball bearings these one I think they like half a dollar or a dollar each for for these generic ones so save some money and buy a lot of them and use them for the different builds a lot of the other Tamiya Models also use a lot of these 1150 sized ball bearings. So, for this build, however, I'm gonna use some old ones that I have lying around. A good tip to test them is just to get, I think I originally got this tip from Jiang, not Jiang Bricks, but uh, the ultimatetamiya.com and ultimaterc.com channel that he used to have. Let's just to take a pencil and start turning it and putting your ear to it and see if there's any miss sounds watching if they are turning correctly and if they're working correctly and these are some cheap entry-level buggies, buggies these are gonna be perfectly fine and much better than these of course if you run it in water and snow and all that you probably gonna need to take a good care of these and get them out and reassemble them and degrease them and all that and grease them so we got some special ball bearing oil you can use uh, the oil seals are actually sometimes a lot more expensive but they seal up the ball bearings much nicer than a standard metal uh, ball bearing like this. But for the internal gears, if you seal up the gearbox, these are perfectly fine for the uh, internals. You might wanna take these rubber sealed ones. These are actually some funny ones with the metal seal here and the rubber seal, so I'm gonna use it for the diff cups here. But they are perfectly fine, all of them, just as long as you take care of moisture and water and check them and see if they are seized or working or needs replacement or rebuilds. Now the second, I warn you this is going to be a long video, the second upgrade you're going to need for a DT buggy is these so a lot of companies make them, but fortunately Tamiya also makes their own and they are quite cheap. I think they cost like four or five dollars or euros for this little tiny pinion gear. This is a steel pinion gear. You can have it in 17 tooth and 19 tooth. And if you want a little more speed, but just don't want to upgrade the motor too much, I definitely prefer the 19 tooth with the torque tuned and ball bearings and 19 tooth you can get a decent run out of your DT02 or 03 but anything lower I think it's gonna be too slow for a lot of people now why do you need this it's kind of 
obvious. The steel pinion here can be used in place of kit standard aluminium part for improved durability. Great for off-road models, I would say great for on-road models too. Because if you use your DT buggy a lot, or O2, this is a DT 02, 03, spare gear that came with one of my second-hand DT 02 MS models that had a brushless motor, your spare gear is probably gonna end up looking like this. So instead of grease, you have a mixture of metal powder from the aluminium stock gear and the grease and it's just gonna ruin and slow down your vehicle. At the same time the pinion gear is gonna wear out the aluminium stock pinion gear and it's probably gonna cause some trouble. I just think there are some teeth missing here. If I search uh, here you can see all that metal and worn down pinion gear is gonna cause a lot of trouble for your spur gear. Now remember these are entry level buggies. Originally they are designed for the fighter buggy series and cups around the world with Japanese and German kits racing against each other with almost stock setups. The fighter buggy cup tournaments with the fighter buggies like the racing fighter. So remember there's no slipper clutch on a DT-01, 02, 03 so you will always have the risk of hurting your motor or your spur gear or whatever. But so far so good, I haven't broken anything on my DT-02 gearboxes yet. I will speak about other weak points later, but the gearboxes seem to be holding up perfectly without the slipper clutch, but there is a risk. So these two upgrades, if you haven't got a Sandwider wiper or desert gator kit or a MS edition, are definitely a good upgrade. The steel pinion, I don't think any DT-02, 01, 03 buggies come with the steel pinion, so all DT buggies will have good use of this one for five, six, four dollars, euros. Another thing I use with the, as you probably have seen, if you have seen my main build, is the ceramic grease from Tamiya. It's not necessarily necessary, but it's a high heat resistant compound and it's Definitely, if you got it, use it instead of the normal grease. Another thing I sometimes use with my gear differentials is the anti-wear or AW grease. It's a very thick grease, so it's not necessarily a fun grease to get on your fingers because you're gonna wash your fingers for very long afterwards to get it off. But these can provide the standard gearbox like this one with some limited slip. Now for this kind of dragster DT-02 I used a lot because in theory this is going to go more straight than turning so I really don't need a lot of diff action. So I used the AWV grease inside the diffs for the bevel gears to make a sort of limited slip. If you got the ball differential, you're not gonna need any AWV grease. As you can see, I have probably tightened this ball differential way too much, but I'm still waiting for one final part to go inside the gear, uh, the ball differential. So I'm gonna have to open it up and replace a small spring disc so I will tighten it or untighten it a bit now before I run it. This is as you can see has absolutely really no slip at all. 
you can make a turn if you go like this and sometimes when you use your buggy the ball to for instance get a little more loose over time so sometimes it's better to tighten up too much than too little because they will start to loosen up a little when you run it but if you tighten it up too much you might damage the bolts and the ball differential so maybe you also are gonna need this some use it some don't I always use some thread lock on the pinion gear this little grub screw that you can see bouncing around here for the pinion gear that is attached to the motor just to make absolutely sure that it won't be slipping or getting loose but you can always also just try to tighten it with your screwdriver and a lot of the time that's plenty to keep it there okay that's enough talk for right now I'm gonna start building my precious little old desert gator and I will get back to you with more comparisons and talks with the other DT02 and 03 gearboxes when I got it complete and we can compare the differences. Just a little interruption, I got the differential all finished and enclosed here and greased up, used a little less of the AWV grease than the last time with the same wiper differential just to see the difference. And so as always when finishing up a diff you need to test it before starting to installing it and I encountered this problem. So these are the Desert Gator XP Racing Fighter, Neo Fighter, uh, Super Fighter, uh, standard plastic uh, diff cups and of course as you, some of you probably have noticed already they do not fit this. So this differential that I got here apparently is not my original Desert Gator uh, differential. I have no idea where that one is, but this is similar to the Saint Viper or the Desert Gator kit version with the metal outdrives here. So again, I needed to share this because if you're thinking about upgrading your differential or your diff cups from the plastic ones to this you actually need some new bell gears as well because these do not go well together so I think it's the same casing as all the, the others but the metal bevel gears the big bevel gears are just a different attachment to a different kind of diff cup or art drive so I actually think I'm gonna leave it like this instead of tearing it apart and degreasing it and starting all over again because I'm gonna need the racing fighter package with the bevel gears and as you can see of course the racing fighter diff cup art drive goes well together with the racing fighter bevel gears here I'm gonna start all over again with a new diff and build it from scratch again. On another side note, I actually need to disassemble this because I just discovered that the bevel gears do not have any of the shims. As you can see, it's just the bevel gears and no shims. So in order not to find this in one year and think it's a well working diff I need to disassemble this and degrease it and well use it as spare parts. So I think this is a very great beginning for a restoration. 
I hope the rest of the build is gonna go a little smoother and a little faster. Everything else was pretty much a walk in the park and we got it all finished. So apart from the ball bearings and the 19 tooth steel pinion and the torque tuned motor, it is identical to the Desert Gator, to the original Desert Gator XB. Very different from the Desert Gator kit. but quite similar to the Desert Gator XB. Now the ball bearings and the motor and the 19 tooth pinion is essential for me. If you run it without the ball bearings and with a silver cane 27 turn standard silver cane and the 17 tooth uh, aluminium pinion, first of all it's gotta run a bit too slow I think for everybody except the complete novice or the very young child but with the ball bearings and the torque tuned motor and the 19 tooth steel pinion it's going to be a lot more durable and it's going to be a lot faster and a lot more fun so for me this is the minimum setup for a dt02 dt03 and I think I've measured my new fighter body, the DT-03, to approximately 35 or 36 kilometers an hour. So it's a good beginner entry level and a, yeah, a quite enjoyable speed for such a small, light-weighted two-wheel drive body. At least for me, you can try a lot of other different setups if you prefer more speed but it's kind of a very uh, affordable upgrade the ball bearings and the 19 tooth pinion steel pinion and the torque tuned motor and you will have a complete different driving experience with your dt02 or dt03 now if you tuned into this video because you're restoring an old Desert Gator XB or another DT02 XB Expert Build RTR model, you will probably have the same manuals. It depends on the age of your specific model, but this is what I got with my Desert Gator. The manual for the radio and the speed controller of those days. And I got a generic DT02 XB instruction manual. Now some XB models I have seen, I have gotten also, they come with the kit instructions. That's a lot better than this, but in this you also get a lot of information. You get some information about, some basic information about driving and setting up your battery and the usual nice and funny Tamiya drawings, some troubleshooting and you get this uh, exploded view. So no kit instructions, but if you know how to read this, 
it's actually enough to reassemble your XB model or start discovering what parts you may upgrade. So this is a generic XB DT02 and as you can see it's the same setup as I have with the restoration right now apart from the ball bearings and the motor and the pinion gear. You can always go online to find the manuals for the other DT02 or DT03 like a DT03 chassis which I ended up following the instructions after I discovered <laughs> the, uh, that I couldn't really build it without seeing what specific parts, if there were any parts different from the kit. But as I followed these along, it pretty much was the same parts. And you can get the sand wiper or desert gator manuals, but these are gonna be different from the standard DT-02 XB setup and also a DT-02 MS. But try looking at online for these manuals if the instructions of the XB is, isn't enough. It should be if you look very closely, you can see the different parts and recognize them and you can build it completely with this exploded view. Now for a quick comparison between the three different setups of the DT0203 gearbox and rear uh, suspension system, we got the pretty much stuck, uh, apart from the, yes, again, ball bearings, pinion gear and motor perhaps, the pretty much stuck setup that a uh, Superfighter G, the first of the DT02s back in 2005, I think, was using. And a lot of the XB models and other versions of the DT02. It's again, apart from the ball bearings and pinion gear, the exact same setup that you will get if you buy a new fighter buggy or a racing racing fighter buggy. The two DT03s available right now. And we got the Sand Wiper and Desert Gator kit versions here with the upgraded metal and arms here and then we got the perhaps an MS edition with some extra parts but pretty much similar to what you would find in a DT02 MS with the ball differential mo motor mount and universal axles and turnbuckles and uh, light-weighted shafts in the gearbox and everything. So apart from the motors here, it's pretty much the evolution of the DT-02 and DT-03. Now you can get some other upgrade parts. I think GPM and a couple of others make actually this system just in aluminium. So in metal, so I think if you imagine this was metal, this is going to be a very beefed up system, which is capable of a lot powerful motors and should be quite durable. If you get the wheel axle and the diff out drives and the thick uh, dog bone in metal here, it's probably going to be more durable than the two other metal setups here but it's also gonna be quite heavy and put some uh, yeah restraint on your motor or your ESC and everything to make it actually run around because it will be a lot heavier but I think if you really want to beef your DT02 or DT03 and without changing the gear I think GPM makes this system in metal. Now about the arms you can always also upgrade like the GG 
GPM part here. It's all metal. There's all kind of metal parts, but the DT02 and 03 arms are actually very good and very sturdy. So it's made out of some soft, very flexible and durable plastic, unlike the gearbox, which is very brittle and unlike these, this type of plastic, which is also very brittle, but the arms are very good stock and I can see absolutely no reason of upgrading these to metal because you will just create weak points in your gear gearbox. It's a better break an arm and I have never broken any of these arms upper or lower. Of course if you want to adjust your camber you need to get rid of the stock arms here and go for some semi turn buckles some adjustable other arms or the real turn buckles which you can dial in here without removing the arm at all but for a standard setup this is more than sufficient enough if you want to beef up the performance and durability this should be a good choice too with the camber adjustment and the universal axles ball differential and all that and we got my entire little DT family here we got the DT01 Mad Bull and we got the DT02 Desert Gator XB we got the DT02 Sand Wiper Kit and we got the upgraded DT03 Racing Fighter here so pretty much I don't know which one I am more excited about but I think I'm pretty excited about all of them at the same time for uh, different reasons so this is gonna be the missing missing link between my hoppers my hoppers and hornets grasshoppers and hornets and the DT02 and DT03s so the missing link the DT01 which I am very excited about trying out for the first time of course I'm excited about seeing my old desert gator in a new revitalized hardware for a day version here I'm pretty excited about the first DT02 kit that I'm building from scratch and I'm also excited about the upgraded DT03 racing fighter so this is gonna be pretty much similar to my DT02 MS with the same wide body here while the desert gator setup here is gonna be pretty much similar to what I got on the new fighter buggy so these two are gonna make a good pair and these two are gonna make a good pair of DT02 and DT03s and it's just gonna be fun seeing these two in action too probably, probably gonna take me a while to get them all finished but somehow somewhere sometime I will get there that's it for now I'm not sure if there's gonna be any more companion videos for the different setups here but if I think of something I need to babble about in a couple of hours <laughs> or an hour long video I will definitely make it and you can always check it out or not that's the beauty of YouTube you don't have to watch if you do not have the time Otherwise, I will see you on my main RC channel for the next builds of the DT01 and DT02 and DT03. And there will be absolutely no talk in those series. You can enjoy them with a cup of coffee, as some of you have mentioned you did with some of them, and just relax and sit back and enjoy the visual aspect of the Tamiya build. Thanks a lot for now. I don't know if anybody stuck around to the end. Hopefully there's a few of you who could need some, who could need a few of the information 
otherwise i will see you in another video happy happy days and take care